Hello, welcome back. Sorry you caught us. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a fascinating conversation. We're having a great conversation. We will let you in on it. Um, we were speaking a, a little bit more about the archaeological significance of some of these sacred sites in Europe, um, specifically findings that people are, people are still unearthing, mm -hmm. findings of goddess figurines, um, earth mother figurines from way beyond, beyond. I don't even want to get into the dates because I don't do numbers. You guys know I don't do numbers. <laughs> Paleolithic. Uh, Pre-Paleolithic. <laughs> pre Pre-Paleolithic <laughs> figurines that yeah. are just absolutely amazing. And it was astounding to me to watch these figurines mm. and see slides of them realizing that here, in your hand, you could hold it in your hand, was proof that the goddess existed before anything else, mm -hmm. before any other religion. And it was absolutely astounding to me that this concrete stuff that you could hold in your hand made absolutely no impression. Didn't make an impression on a lot of folks, doesn't make any impression on Christianity, certainly. This fundamentalists don't even want to hear about it because mm. we obviously planted them there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but it's an Stand amazing. Paul Light sculpting. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, you know, my fingernails, they're just gone. Uh, <laughs> but it's an amazing, it's an absolutely amazing thing. And when I was in mm. Ireland, oh, about 14 years ago, mm. The sacred sites that are there yeah. are astounding. They're absolutely astounding too. And there's and it's the same as you as you said. It you go to the hill of Tara, and you're at Tara, and it's you and a couple of sheep, <laughs> and then you go up the road and you have tea and you talk about knitting sweaters. Mm. And I think that our appreciation of the site is so much greater because we're here. That's right. We're five thousand miles away, as opposed to those people who are like, oh yeah, well it's just a big open field with sheep. Well, in their backyard. We found that with some of the speakers we had at Craftwise also. Yeah. If, we, yeah. if we bring in Philip Cargum, or we bring in Janet Stewart and Gavin from Ireland, mm -hmm. everybody wants to get to that lecture. Yeah. But yet you'll have someone local who's got a lot to say, and they kind of miss it. Yeah. They'll go to the, the far away things because you don't get that very often. Yeah. And that's the other point is that the importance of our, I think there's a great concern about um, not appropriating Native American um, spirituality. Um, yeah. Divinities, mm -hmm. sacred sites. Um, you know, we're very. I think we're all very sensitive and aware of that. Um, there, are, there are parallels. There, are, you know, the core mm -hmm. shamanic techniques, and uh, because we're both earth religions, and the conclusions that we draw from the practices that we use and the experiences that we have. Um, but one of the um, the things that we must attend to are the spirits of the land on which we reside, and um, they don't speak Gaelic. No, they don't speak Gaelic <laughs> <laughs> or Sanskrit. <laughs> um, they don't, you know. Yeah. But they speak the truth, and they will speak through us if we open ourselves to them. And um, that's what we are. Uh, we're there. We are the we're the awakened self consciousness of the universe of the earth in this little piece of the universe, and it's our responsibility to speak. Um, for the earth because it's dying. One reason I wrote this book was because there one, there's, I, when I started 20 years ago, there was hardly anything. There was practically uh, nothing. There was, there was... Sybil Leak. Yeah, there was Sybil Leak. That's and that right. Was it. And there was <laughs> one book by Stuart Farrar when he was yep. still a, yep. a reporter for The Sun, The That's London right. Sun. That's right. Um, there was That's nothing. Right. And now, you know, you go to Barnes and & Nobles and <laughs> there are scores of books. It's amazing. <laughs> it's wonderful. And yet, and they're, and they're wonderful and they're informative. And yet... I'm going to interrupt you yeah. for a moment because I think we have a phone no, call. No? no? no, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm sorry. No, I'm that's, sorry. A, that's okay. I hope we do get some phone calls. But people are learning very much from books now. There aren't mm -hmm. enough teachers. And yeah, right. though the books are full of information, our work is not about um, information. It's about experience. And as a priestess and as somebody who's taught for 20, almost 20 years, it seemed to me that what people most needed was to be taken through a journey um, so that they would understand what it feels like when they cast a spell when they do an invocation, um, when they follow the instructions that they've been given in all these other exactly. books, what does it feel like? How does it change your life? We've actually got a phone call. We have a phone Great. call. Oh, I love the new phone card. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hello, caller. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Shana. I'm, I live in Hamden. And Phyllis, you were speaking before when you were on The View, the mm -hmm. born-again Christian who had given you some trouble, so to speak. Um, I have had many experiences with the born again who have the you know the thought in their head that we are devil worshippers and things of that nature. I was e I even have a born again uncle who told me I was going to hell. Um, Remember, but, you can't go someplace you don't believe in. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you created them. Thank you very much. Right. 
But my fiance and I very recently became friends with a 19-year-old born again who blew my mind because he's very open, he's very interested, he sits at our altar at home and says, what does this do, what does that do, what does that mean? He's very interested and so open-minded, it really, you know, made my head spin because I had never experienced anything like that before and neither had my fiance. And I guess it just goes to show that, you know, we don't have to stay in the closet and we're, exactly. you know, we're exactly. out there and we're important people and we are special people and other people can see that now and I think the the idea is changing and I believe that you being on the show and doing such a good job at it really put a lot of oomph into it, you know, so I love your show, we sit and watch it all the time. Thank you. And I just... <laughs> I just wanted to say that, you know, we're doing we're doing a good job. We really are. And yes, I wanted we are. to thank you. <laughs> yes, we are. And it's That's and it's great. because of people like you. Thank you. That very we're much. doing a good job because of a positive attitude and the ability to say, Okay, well you may not believe exactly what I believe. But that's okay, and this is what anathema is for, and this is why we light this particular color candle. That, and, and to do it in just a non-threatening way, and just facts, just the facts. This is what mm -hmm. it's for, this is what we use it for. Mm -hmm. And when you present yourself without fear, you give permission, pe give people permission not to be afraid of you. Exactly. That's exactly it. And we had actually attended a Bible study, believe it or not. And <laughs> that's great, though. That is great, because we you, you want to learn. We went as sort of represent, representations of the Wiccan religion, and everyone was very open to it. Of course, you know, a few eyes got big when we mentioned the W word, witch, but, not <laughs> <laughs> but it was just amazing because I had always carried this, you know, this stone around being like, oh, Christians hate us, and right. they're never going to understand, yeah, but I am I really like how things are turning around now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a lot happier for it. <laughs> One of the things that, that I've been doing for a number of years is interfaith dialogue. And yes. it, it's, ve it's challenging to try to find a common vocabulary. Um, yes, they have different conceptions of divinity and divinity's relationship to humanity. And the, uh, but some of my, some of my best friends <laughs> <laughs> um, are, are, are Christian, you know, and, and I can't say I have best friends who are Muslims, but um, the fact is that at the core of most spiritualities, you know, is a is a common understanding or experience of the sacred. Um, when people are willing to relinquish their metaphors as literally true and understand that they're metaphors and try to seek that common vocabulary, um, and for Wiccans, it's extremely important. We're really kind of an interfaith faith. I mean, we understand yes, we that are. we're dealing with metaphors. On, yes, we are. On yeah. the screen at the moment, I think is Phyllis's website. Oh. How nice. And oh, her information, excellent. all the information on the book and workshops and different things that are on the screen at the moment. Great. And if I had really much better eyes, I'd probably <laughs> read that to you, but I can't because I'm going blind because this is what happens when you get old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't see far. I can't see close. Mm -hmm. Bifocals, it's one of those things. Uh -huh. Caller, thank you very, very much. That was a terrific comment, and we really appreciate your call. Thank you. It's important yeah. for you to hear from people how important what you're doing is. And it's nice to be reminded that even in the born again community, you have orthodox, conservative, and reformed exactly. born agains. I mean, exactly, <laughs> and that's <laughs> they're and not that's all a crazy. You know? that's right. And that's a wonderful thing. That's Every case thing. is individual, I and mean, just you can't blanket that's right. anybody, which is the problem. I mean, and that's one of the things that I think that we've tri we've tried so hard to do mm -hmm. is to kind of, sort of, gently force people to meet us as people first. Yes. And I don't. I I know very few Catholics and mer m very few Jews and very few Muslims who walk around saying, "Hi, my name right. is so and so. I'm a Jew. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a Greek Orthodox." That's right. People don't usually do that when they introduce themselves. Exactly. It's like, hi, I'm a respiratory therapist. Or hi, I'm a nurse. You know, maybe you talk about what you do. But, but not you in don't. England. Actually, we learned you're not supposed to mention your occupation. You're not supposed to ask, and you're not supposed to mention your <laughs> occupation. So I don't know that's what you talk right. about. You talk about the weather. Hey, maybe that's why I didn't get a job as a respiratory therapist in Ireland. Hmm, I'll have to remember that when I go back. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. <laughs>